the most uh, important stat that came out of that research was that um, when asked about how, what the different jobs and occupations there were in the industry, over 50% could not identify another job other than a farmer. Our recent data shows around 122,000 vacant jobs in the industry, and those are being filled about, I think 75,000 of those jobs right now are being filled by foreign workers, either on a seasonal uh, basis, temporary year round, or on a pathway to permanency. Hi, and welcome to the Ag Podcast. I'm Crystal Mackay, and I am thrilled to be your host to guide us through some thought-provoking discussions with really interesting guests who know farming and agriculture from the ground up. Yes, farm pun intended. Today, we're going to talk about something near and dear to my heart, the very heart of agriculture, which is the people. Agriculture is facing one of our greatest challenges, and that's the people to actually do the work, to innovate, to farm the lands, and quite frankly, to feed us. Joining us from Ottawa today is Jennifer Wright. She's the Executive Director of the Canadian Agriculture Human Resource Council, aka CARC. And as I like to joke, are you even in agriculture if you don't have an acronym? Thanks for joining us today, Jen. Thanks so much for having me, Crystal. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Awesome. So I didn't share any data in the intro on purpose because that's your gig. I know your group spends a ton of time and resources trying to measure and evaluate what is happening with human resources. Maybe you can paint a picture with some of your data and what you've learned. Sure. So um, you're right. We do spend a lot of time looking at the numbers and uh, really trying to put data to what the day to day employer is feeling. And, you know, certainly we've had a labor shortage in agriculture for some time. Um, our data is really showing that that's going to continue to increase and, um, you know, it will be impacted, um, you know, in the next seven, eight years by the aging workforce, the retirement of uh of a lot of our, our farmers, uh, the average age of a farmer is 57. So if you think about, uh, you know, that stat and uh, that group reaching retirement, that's going to have a significant impact on what we already have as a labor shortage. Um, we also have fewer young people coming into the industry. And if you look at the labor force across Canada for any industry, there's just fewer young people. Uh, we didn't have as many babies as are the generation before us. And uh, so there's just not as many um, you know, people coming into the um, workforce that also impacts our labor supply. So a lot of uh, time, I think, for industry taking a look at how to address these uh, challenges, how to ensure that uh, the labor shortages don't grow but start to decline, and looking really for solutions in um, what might help uh, with this issue. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. You know, if we think back, you know, even 20 years ago, this labor topic was not on the agendas of any farm meetings. You know, it was like how to farm more productively or, you know, what's the latest research mm -hmm. and innovation. Now this topic's everywhere. Why is that? Like, when did we decide, wow, we better pay attention? You know, when did this become a pain point, I guess? Um, I think you're right. And, uh, you know, from our data, we've been tracking this for close to 15 years now. We know that that labor shortage has been continuing to grow. However, now we're seeing it grow to a point that, uh, you know, it's becoming hard to manage. And, and uh, we're seeing anecdotally hearing uh, farmers exiting the industry or not expanding their operations or decreasing the inputs that they're going to have because they just can't find enough people to, to work on the farm. And uh, when we do uh, survey employers, you know, we ask them, how do you manage in this labor shortage or when you have vacancies? And, you know, the answer has always been, we I work a little bit longer, you know, the staff I do have work a little bit longer. We know that's not sustainable. And we know that that labor shortage now is getting to a point where, you know, it's it's really becoming a, a pain, like not more than a pain point, probably. So yeah. um, certainly you're right, seeing it uh, come to the forefront at firm meetings and commodity groups and uh, certainly the 
uh, one of the top issues that I think facing the industry right now. I would agree. So, you know, we talk about there's not enough farm kids to go around. We've said that for 30 yeah. years, right? So we need to attract new people to our industry. Um, you know, what what hurdles do you think we need to overcome? Why aren't people just flocking to agriculture? That's a really good question. And, uh, you know, I think in the pandemic, when things started to shut down, um, for those not involved in agriculture, there was this thought that, well, there shouldn't be a labor shortage in agriculture now. There's, a, you know, a larger workforce unemployed. They can just, you know, go work on the farm. I think there's a few things that are contributing to that. Uh, we just completed um, in fall 2023 a perceptions of the industry by non-ag folks uh, research piece. That was really telling for us. I mean, some of it was very, you know, what we predicted. Um, but then I think the most uh, important stat that came out of that research was that um, when asked about how, what the different jobs and occupations there were in the industry, over 50% could not identify another job other than a farmer. Obviously, probably the most important job you know, in the industry, but we also know that there's a lot of other uh, jobs that go into producing our food, to supporting the farmer, um, you know, and for for non-egg folks to not understand or have awareness of that, you know, really paints a picture of where we're at for needing to build awareness. And interestingly, when we asked that question, probed a little further on that question and asked, you know, uh, more questions about it, over 50% of those respondents thought it was a trick question. So, you know, that oh, kind of supports like, not only <laughs> that they couldn't identify another occupation, but they thought like, why would you even ask? That's silly. There's only farmers in agriculture. So um, again, wow. so the most important occupation, but lots of other things happening. Um, also, you know, increasing that um, uh, awareness of what modern agriculture is all about, the amount of uh, technology, automation, digitalization that's uh, yeah. taking place across the industry, the, uh, you know, being part of climate solutions, the sustainable practices. Um, these are all things that we need to do more to raise awareness um, across kids that are in uh, high school, but not in ag communities, um, you know, students that are in post-secondary programs, but not necessarily in an ag program. And then just the broader, uh, broader Canadian population that, you know, um, might not be aware of the skills they have and how they could have a really great career in our industry. Mm, I love that. I used to uh, visit classrooms. So it was always one of my favorite things. And I would bring a bag of Doritos and I'd get the students to brainstorm, like, what are all the jobs that went into making these Doritos, starting, you know, with the farmer that grew the corn, but all the other things, right? So is it even a possibility if, you know, if they haven't considered anything? Oh, really, really great info. I know you're a farm girl yourself and you speak with farmers all the time about this topic. Can you share a specific example, you know, of like something farmers have shared with you, like what they're doing or experiencing on their farm directly? Um, from labor shortages, you know, definitely, uh, like I had said uh, a little bit earlier, anecdotally, you know, making decisions to decrease productivity, um, you know, decrease the inputs they're putting in, um, looking for even changes in, um, you know, the crops are growing to be less labor intensive, um, you know, that type of thing. Um, but they're also doing things like, you um, looking at other ways to attract people, looking at ways, not always monetarily, but also non-monetarily to ensure that they're providing a really good workplace, uh, that people want to come and work and stay, uh, and that they're developing uh, people's skills, putting in those uh, really strong HR best practices as well. Yeah. And and what about um, attracting new Canadians or foreign workers? What What have you heard or seen on that front? Well, I mean, agriculture um, definitely is uh, an industry that uh, works very closely with foreign workers uh, through many different temporary foreign worker programs. Uh, our data would show that they're essential to our industry. Um, our recent data shows around 122,000 vacant jobs in the industry, and those are being filled about, I think, 75,000 of those jobs right now are being filled by foreign workers, either on a seasonal uh, basis, temporary year round or on a pathway to permanency. So I think the industry has done a, you know, a really strong job at connecting with 
uh, foreign workers. And uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to continue to grow that. My partner's an egg farmer, and uh, I help him hire and recruit people to the farm. And one thing we've done is just kind of reimagine the workforce to say, is there an opportunity for someone to come from nine to three to collect eggs, a mom or a parent, you know, to say you can drop your kids off, come spend the day in the barn and, you know, gathering eggs and then get back to your, your children. Also great for newly retired people, you know, to say they want to do something meaningful. You know, I, I just think we need to reimagine what our work for us really looks like in some cases. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, having that flexibility and, you know, understanding, um, I guess, being open to maybe doing things a little bit differently, having that flexibility in your hours or how you approach a shift or, you know, work, I think is also very important. And certainly something that we're seeing um, as a demand of the younger generation as well for work-life balance, um, but also being having that innovation and openness to doing things a little bit differently um, also opens up new doors for different labor pools, like you've suggested, with newly retired people, uh, parents that uh, you know might not be able to work um, a full-time shift or a long day or work, you know seasonally um, as much. Um, we do have to be open to looking at different ways to doing things and, and making sure that uh, it's supporting the productivity of the firm. Yeah, absolutely. A good friend of mine has a hog barn and he loves to hire nurses. His family hires nurses to work in the sow barn, right? Like amazing care. The nurses love it. You know, they can pick their hours and it's not shift work, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, I mean, just taking a yeah. skill set like nursing and applying it to your barn like how awesome is that, right? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, I know you and your team at CARC are really passionate about this topic and you've been spending a lot of time and resources, particularly the last few years, developing new programs and toolkits and resources for farmers. Maybe you could share a little bit about what you have that's available that people might not be aware of. Sure. So uh, one thing that we've been doing more on the, the national front, I guess, um, is uh, really trying to bring the industry together across Canada to identify where those workforce shortages are, um, what's working, what we can amplify, where the gaps are, and as an industry, how we can work together to, to address those gaps. That's something uh, that initiative is called the National Workforce Strategic Plan, and uh, it's co-led by uh, the Canadian Federation of Agriculture and Food and Beverage Canada. Canada it initially was funded from uh, funds through Future Skills Center, which we were very grateful for. That work has really been great at, you know, again, bringing industry together, identifying what's needed, making sure we're not duplicating efforts. Other things that we have been doing as an organization, um, we have some great HR tools and resources for agriculture specifically. Things like our Agri HR Toolkit, which is an online resource which pretty much has everything you need to manage people in your um, agribusiness or on the farm. Um, and, you know, very comprehensive. We've just updated it to make uh, functionality and navigation a little bit easier. Um, so there's that. We also have some HR e-learning, uh, self-directed e-learning available, supervisory and uh, leadership training um, more self-directed. Um, we are also uh, have launched uh, inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility training. Again, um, e-learning, self-directed, but really trying to, as you were saying, you know, we're looking at bringing different people into the workforce, making sure that uh, that the workforce is ready um, and uh, that we're creating inclusive workplaces. That training we've really tried to develop in a way to meet people where they're at um, and to support conversations, either, you know, if you're coming into the conversation or maybe you're further down the road and just need some, some more training in a certain area. So um, we've also uh, started uh, to support uh, more on the um, temporary foreign worker side of things. We have a quality agriculture management program which helps uh, employers that have not necessarily hired temporary farm workers in the past learn about the different um, streams, immigration streams that they might use, figure out which one works best for them, how to go about doing things like a labor market uh, assessment, um, you know, and then once you have your workers here, what you're required to do to make sure that you have everything in place to, uh, to uh, have them on your farm. 
So there's many of things like that uh, that are available. We're doing some one-on-one HR consulting as well now with producers. Um, so just trying to provide that support as much as we can um, to ensure that uh, that we can be successful as an industry. I mean, really, if you think about it, it's really only one generation or so that we've started hiring people, right? It was always our families. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad comes from a family of 14. My mom comes from a family of six, right? (laughs) He had a lot of kids, uh, you know, because they did all the work, right? And then as our firms have gotten larger, more specialized, and just there's just a need for more people. So um, your tools are so great to help level set. And I love the online on demand. It could be Sunday night at 10 p.m. It's like, you know what, I'm going to do a better, you know, take this inclusion course. I think that's awesome. So kudos to you. So I know uh, you think about HR 24-7 when you're not at a rink like me and hockey's on our mind. We do. We have that other hobby that we love. Um, tell me a bit about you and what drives you, like what motivates you, I guess, when it comes to this HR picture that you're talking about to us. Yeah, well, um, you know, I grew up on a farm in southwestern Ontario um, and, uh, you know, our farm had been there. My dad, I think, was the second or third generation on that farm um, and just loved, you know, being around agriculture. Um, My parents also had a farm equipment dealership, which gave me really a a neat perspective growing up because I could see the primary production side uh, day to day. And then also I was fortunate enough that my parents uh, were very much like, you know, they took the bring your kid to work pretty seriously (laughs) because I did grow up in the dealership (laughs) and there weren't a lot of summer camps. There was a lot of dusting of shelves uh, and things like that, which I, (laughs) you know, I'm so grateful for actually. Um, So, you know, I just, and and coming from a rural community and seeing the importance of agriculture. Yes, I did uh, move to the city in the end and, and do live uh, downtown Ottawa, which is very different than where I grew up. Um, But agriculture is where I came from and it's my roots. And uh, I think it's super important to be supporting the industry, to be involved in all the great work that the industry does. Uh, We do grow food for Canada and the world. And uh, I love being part of that. And, you know, the people in the industry working uh, that we work with as well, they're pretty awesome too. So it makes it uh, that more fun. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, I'm Crystal, so of course I always have to ask a crystal ball question. Uh, we're uh, <laughs> that that date 2050, which seemed like a long time ago. You know when people started referring, you know goals 2050. You know, um, it's sneaking up on us. So if you painted a picture of HR in Canadian agriculture for 2050, what do you think it might look like? That's a really good question. I think there's a lot of unknowns, but I do think there's some trends that are going to really shift things in the next 10 years. Um, We're really seeing, obviously, AI come into place, not just on the farm, but in HR and people management as well. Um, I think we, you know, we get a lot of questions now around technology and automation and shouldn't that be taking care of our our labor shortages? I think, you know, right now the industry isn't at a point where, um, there, there is adoption of technology and automation absolutely happening. But, you know, by 2050, I think there'll be more of that. Right now, what we're seeing on that front actually is not necessarily less people needed or less employees needed, but people with different skills. Mm-hmm. So making sure that we're upskilling the workforce we have, so we're retaining them. Um, and then also attracting the uh, new employees that have that digital literacy, problem solving, and that kind of thing. So I think it's going to be really interesting by 2050. I think, um, you know, probably in the past, it might have been easier to predict that far in advance. I think, um, you know, in the last 10 years, we've seen things change so quickly already that uh, we seem to be on that rapid pace of change. So it's hard to say, but, uh, you know, I think there's going to be, uh, you know, we'll still have a really strong industry with uh, good food production in our country. Uh, Before we ask our final question, if you've liked the content you've heard today, I encourage you to like and subscribe and leave leave us a comment. Tell us what you think and uh, share this episode with someone else that you think might value it. Okay, our final question, Jen. This podcast has a magic wand and I'm going to give you the ability to send a message to every farmer in Canada about human resources what piece of advice would you like to share with them um that's a good question i think really it's that people are our most important asset 
Um, so, you know, when we look at uh, the weather, we look at um, inputs, we look at productivity, uh, our customers, um, our employees. At the end of the day, it all comes down to people. And so the more we can uh, have good HR uh, practices in place, uh, the more we take care of our people, um, I think the more successful we'll be. And, uh you know, it really does. It comes down to people at the end of the day. That's the most important thing, at least in my eyes. Oh, I love that. I always say, we say people are our most important asset, but we don't always act like it. So put some of those things into practice. And obviously um, you've got lots of resources to help people do that. Well, our, our time has flown by as I expected it would have. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your insights with us today and some updates from your team. Uh, we really appreciate the genuine commitment you and Kirk has towards our industry and the important work you're doing to provide support to farmers on this challenge that as I, I feel is just only going to continue to grow. Uh, thanks to everyone for watching and listening. We really appreciate it. If you like this episode, please share it with someone else who might like it too. We will be adding some uh, resources to the show notes, some of the things that Jen uh, referenced earlier today. So please check it out. <laughs>